Hi, I'm Phil Steele. One problem that comes up all the time when you're preparing photos for use on the web is how to crop them to exact pixel sizes. Say, for example, a website wants you to upload a photo that's exactly 800 by 600 pixels. How do you get your photo exactly that size? There are a lot of ways to do it, and most of them are frustrating, difficult, and time-consuming. But there's also an easy one-step shortcut trick for doing it, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. All right, here's how this problem typically comes up. Let's say you want to make a new cover photo for your Facebook page. And Facebook tells you to upload a photo that's exactly 851 by 315 pixels. So how the heck do you make your photo exactly that size? Well, clearly this is a job for Photoshop and we're most likely going to need to crop the image in Photoshop. And if you've already taken my Photoshop basics course, then you know how we crop photos. You use the crop tool right here on the tool palette. And when you click on that, it gives you these little handles that you can drag inside the image and you can make a suitable selection from the part that you think is what you want. And then you can just hit enter to crop it. Now that looks pretty good, but the problem is it's not the right size. Let's see what the size is. All right, that's 1163 by 366. Okay, obviously that won't do. So usually the first thing you think of trying is, well, I'll just resize the photo. And since it needs to be 851 pixels wide, I'll just go make it that. So I go to the image size menu and I'm gonna change this and I'm going to make it 851. All right, so now I resized it to be 851 pixels wide. Now, oh, the problem is, though, how tall is it? Let me check the size. Oh, well, now it's only 268 pixels high, and I need it to be 315. So there's nothing I can do by cropping it further to add more pixels. So this was a dead end. So let's back up and try again. I'm going to undo that. All right, now I'm back to that first cropped version, and now I have a brilliant idea. This time, instead of setting the width first, I'll set the height first, since it's more than wide enough. So let's try that. I'm gonna go to image size, and I'm going to make it, instead of 366, I'm gonna make it 315. Okay. All right, so now it's the right height, but let's see. Now, well, it's the right height, but it's too wide. It's 1,001 pixels wide, but we can deal with that. We can crop it off. And the easiest way to do that is to use the canvas size command, which will just trim it to the exact size we want. So I'm gonna go back to the image menu, pick canvas size, and it's already the right height. So I just need to change the width to 851. So I'll do that. Now I have some options about, is it going to leave it centered and trim off both sides, or is it gonna trim off the left side or trim off the right side? I think I'll leave it centered and let it trim equally from both sides. And unfortunately, if you don't like those three options, you're kind of out of luck because this is a blunt tool. So let's do that. Yep. All right, now let's see what we have. Okay, now we have an image that's 851 by 315. That's what we wanted. And unfortunately, it's not exactly the part of the photo that I wanted to use because I had to use that blunt tool of the canvas size. And it also took a lot of time and a lot of fiddly little steps to get here. Fortunately, there's a better way. And the better way allows you to do it all in one step while choosing exactly the part of the photo that you want. So let's back up and start over again. All right, here we are back to our original photo and this time we're going to do it right. So we're gonna start by selecting the crop tool right here and you can see when you do, there's some fields up here in the toolbar. There's a little box here and a box here and a box here and it's not very easy to see those if there's no numbers in them. And if you're not seeing the same thing I have here, check this little drop down menu and make sure it says width by height by resolution. That's the setting you want. Now here's the trick. 
If you know to do this, you can type the exact dimensions in here in pixels and Photoshop will crop to exactly those pixel dimensions. But there's a little catch. So I'm going to type it in 851 and now I'm going to type PX meaning pixels. And in the next field, I'm going to type 315 and I'm going to type PX meaning pixels. That little PX is absolutely crucial because if you don't type that, sometimes it defaults to inches or centimeters or other crazy things. But if you type pixels, it knows you mean pixels. Now, I don't know why Adobe didn't just make pixels one of the options on this little drop down menu right here instead of pixels per inch, pixels per centimeter. How about just pixels? Because that would give us a clue that this is possible but somehow they expect you to know to type PX to get pixels. So if you type that, then all is good. So now you see when I drag the handles, it's keeping the ratio that I wanted. It's always gonna be 851 by 315. And then it's just a matter of selecting the part of the photo that I think is ideal for my purposes here. So let me just uh, mess around a bit and get the, get the part that I think I want. And let's say right there. And then I hit enter. And it crops it. Now let's check the size. And there it is. It's exactly 851 by 315. And it's exactly the part of the photo that I wanted to use. And I did it all in one step. Now the important thing to understand here is that Photoshop is really doing a two-step process behind the scenes. First, it's cropping the photo to the area that you specify, and then it's resampling the photo to make it match the pixel dimensions that you specified. So it's a crop plus a resample. And it's important to keep that in mind for two reasons. Now first, as always, after resampling, you may want to sharpen the photo. And of course, we've talked about why you sharpen photos after resampling in my Photoshop Basics course, so I won't repeat all that here. If you need a refresher on that, you can check the course. The second reason to keep in mind that it's resampling is that if you pick a really small area, you should be aware that it will be upsampled to the specified dimensions, and then it may be blurry. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to back up. Now, let's say I had chosen, I'll pick my crop tool. Let's say I picked a really tiny little area of my photo. You know, maybe I just wanted this little, little piece, you know, right here. And now, if I crop that, you can see what Photoshop did. It actually upsampled it. It interpolated between the existing pixels because there weren't enough pixels there to make an 851 by 315 photo. So it upsampled a little tiny one and filled in extra pixels. And it comes out blurry and grainy as a result. So you want to be careful using this method and selecting a very tiny area of your photo. Now that's not a Photoshop limitation. That's just the nature of pixel-based images. Now, if you want to know everything about Photoshop and photo editing, you can watch my online course, Photoshop Basics for Photographers. It's a beginner course designed to get you off the ground with Photoshop and using it like a pro in no time. You can check it out on my website at steeltraining.com.